Well, the litigation and the investigations are going to go on for years mm -hmm. and all kinds of, you know, I'm sure class action suits or whatever. And, and that is how you, you, you clean it up. You shine the light of transparency. Mm -hmm. After the fact. After the fact. And these, okay. and these questions will be answered and they should be. But for me, it's about sticking with the infrastructure as it is because it's mm -hmm. worked forever and not changing the rules for just one set of idiots right. and changing them for another set of idiots. Hmm. The idiots will be culled and it, oh, it's God. important to do that. And, and as a result, you end up with a, when you cull the herd, you end up with a stronger herd. Sure. If you don't call the herd, you continue to have idiot bankers blowing up all the time. Right. Well, because there's really no risk. Uh, you, you may as well try to expand your bank as recklessly as you can, because then you get those. That is precisely <laughs> the argument for why you don't change the rules, because yeah. you will not change behavior of idiot bankers. If I get a bank charter, I can go to Vegas, put all the depositors' money on black, and yeah. take no risk. Yeah. FDIC why wouldn't I do that? <laughs> why wouldn't I do that? <laughs> exactly. Oh, I lost all the money in Vegas. Bail me out. Yeah. Like, that's not okay. Yeah. You start over. <laughs> right. Yeah, that, that's the other thing. You had board members from Lehman Brothers on the board over at Silicon Valley Bank. <laughs> they were all able to start over. <laughs> all of this will come you know, to the fore. Very through, interesting. Through the, uh, the light of transparency. I have a slightly different take on it because the majority of risk right now in the infrastructure of both regional and money center banks is commercial real estate. Mm -hmm. So that is just one, we have 11 sectors in the economy. Uh, the 11th, the newest is real estate. And a lot of crypto it- Crypto for 12 soon? <laughs> well, I still argue that could happen, but yeah. we can talk about crypto yes. in a while, but let's just stick on this issue. The majority of debt that was uh, done in very liquid times with very mm -hmm. low rates starts to come due in Q3 and Q4 of two th 2024. So the defaults will start then, and then the peak of it, the refinancing in 2025 is going to be very high. So that's when all of a sudden the economics of a lot of commercial real estate don't make sense. It'll be mm -hmm. upside down. And the equity holders in, the, in those real estate uh, buildings, will, they'll go to zero. Mm. But the great thing about commercial real estate, there's always an underlying bid. Right. So it's not a zero. It's just that the existing shareholders are going to get wiped out. That's okay, mm. because hopefully they diversified their portfolio. The one thing you get as a free lunch in investing is diversification. So you don't want to have all your assets in commercial real estate, maybe up to 20% maximum. But that culling will come. It'll be 24, 25. That's going to be painful because mm. refinancing that debt that was done at 5 to 7 will be now 9 to 15. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so <clears throat> I feel sorry uh, for those people. But... It's okay, but it's not going to change the fundamentals of the economy. It's just mm -hmm. one sector under pressure. I'm very optimistic, actually, that the economy is structurally sound and, in fact, even more efficient that it's come through the pandemic and been digitized. It takes a 40 to 60 percent haircut. Uh -huh. And that would be under extreme stress. More mm -hmm. likely, you know, maybe 25 to 35 percent, depending mm -hmm. on the property. And there's a whole group of investors now forming funds, stress funds around this to start to go. It's like bottom feed. <laughs> well, it's like a slug at the bottom of the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the shark dies and the protein falls to the bottom and yeah. it's re repositioned. It gets <laughs> like consumed. That. And so the yeah. same thing's happening here. These sharks are emerging mm -hmm. um, and it, it'll take about 36 months to take all oh, wow. of those facilities hmm. and refinance them at higher rates and reestablish their cap rate. It used to be that you'd wipe out all the equity in commercial real estate every seven years. Oh. Then it was every 12 years. Now it's going to be 25 years. Oh my God. It's been yeah. 25 years of low rates. Huh. And so I would argue that sector is going to be challenged for a long time to come. Oh, wow. But it's, it's been the longest cycle ever. There's been billions and billions made and everybody mm -hmm. should be pretty happy they've made money in real estate. Yeah. Um, I think there'll still be opportunities more in residential mm -hmm. and recreational, but commercial real estate, it's, it's not only that, the fundamental workforce is changing their behavior. Oh, yeah. and they don't want to live in, you know, basement rat cubicles. I mean, so all those buildings that were built with, you know, no windows in the basement and everybody sitting in rat holes, they're worthless, right? They have to reposition. This is now about the competition of states policy on taxes. <laughs> yeah. We're talking residential. If you look at, you know, real estate in New York or California or, uh, you know, Wisconsin or Wyoming, versus Washington, Washington mm -hmm. versus Texas. Florida. 
<laughs> and Florida and, you know, uh, West Virginia. States that have no state tax mm. are enjoying extremely buoyant yeah. commercial real estate, not commercial, but residential. residential yeah. In fact, Florida is up another 6.7% in, in a time when rates went up yeah. that much.